cover of Avi is really impressive. It's full of symbols. Uh, is there a symbol that's really meaningful for you? Something that maybe describes your personality? Yes, I think the, I think the, the, the very image of, of uh, Lucifer himself, mm -hmm. you know, the whole idea of him is that it's, he's, he's the lit thing in it. Mm -hmm. You know, if you look at the lighting on it, he's, he's lit. Um, and that's because he's the light bringer. You don't have to be religious to get the point, you know, and it's almost like, um, you know, the, the religious description is, is just that, it's a description. Uh, but it, it speaks on a different level, it speaks about you and your whole humanity much more than any religious belief. Um, but this, this is a symbolic figure who was apparently given the task to look after man, to guide him, to give him knowledge, to make him see the light. And, you know, if you look around the planet where we are at the minute, uh, much like in the past, sometimes we don't see the light. You don't see the light in your own life, you know. And sometimes you need to just take a break a minute and, and have a think. And in the cover we have um, a, a very passive, huge fallen angel who's walking towards you with his pipes, with a bag full of asps, you know, the symbolism there, the temple of David, the sheep are with him to represent man. One of the sheep is, there's a wolf inside, mm -hmm. the wolf and sheep should beware. And we have Adam and Eve in an embrace joined together because Adam was, <coughs> and Eve was from Adam's rib. You know, and the lovers are embraced. You know, it's a barren landscape. You know, it's dry, it's barren. Um, it's a foreboding, cloudy storm behind him, but it's no lightning and there's no cracked earth with demons coming up and grabbing people. There's no angels firing down. There's, you know, so is it the beginning or is it an ascent of man or is it a, the, the, the completion? Is it Armageddon? It's, you know, the question is for the onlooker, and each onlooker, hopefully, when they look at the cover, will see something different, you know. Uh, they may see the demonic, they may see the evil, they may see hope, they may see desolation, they may see a new beginning, but, uh, but that's the idea. He's bringing light to you. See, open your eyes and see. And once you see and you accept who you are, um, and that, uh, you know, the, the balance of the world is respect, you know, if you're at a junction and this guy wants to pull out and you allow him to pull out, then that's fine, you go next. If this guy comes there and you think, fuck him and I don't want to let him out, then now you have conflict. Mm. You know, the conflict is easy to avoid, it's also easy to create. Uh, and I think we only have to look at, uh, you know, North Korea and... Mr. Trump at the minute to say how easy it is to inflate a conflict that also could be easy to resolve. Yeah. You know, uh, I'm not saying that this guy is, is the best for his country or that guy is the best for his country. What I'm saying is by two boys being in a yard trying to measure how big their cocks are <laughs> is going to lead to some kind of trouble, you know, yeah. and does it need to be that far, you know. So again, it's um, just don't get caught up in this maelstrom of negativity, you know, just just be there. So I want the cover to be a positive image because even on the album we do talk about, uh, uh, um, you know, metal we bleed and falls in hell or about how we feel about our music and the audiences and, and that kind of life, that, 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 that heavy rock metal, whatever genre, black metal, death metal, the kind of life and energy it gives us. Um, you know, black and roll, we speak of our heritage of music, the, the, the music that we love, the classics that influenced us, and everything from Hendrix to Maiden, all of that. But then, you know, Bloodstained Dirt, Avi Satanis, uh, a Preacher Man, those talk of, you know, how we can get caught up in this negativity. Um, we, pseudo religion, pseudo politics, which is supposed to be positive, yet we all feel a negative effect from, you know. Um, you know, nobody likes the tax man. Everybody's trying to live in an economy that's burying us under an affordability where we can't buy a property or we struggle to earn enough from our job, you know. And, and yet these are the people that are supposed to be looking after us, you know. So um, when we get caught up in that, it's, it's uh, the powers within us to change that, you know, the next generation, you know. Mm -hmm. um, so keep that with you. Don't conform into what they want you to do, just stay true to who you are, you know, mm. and, and, and then we can change things. And that's, it's about just seeing the light in your life, you know, don't get caught up in the shit stuff, just try and be positive, you know. Uh, talking about Lucifer, have you heard about this satanic temple in Detroit? Yes. Have you been there? 
Uh, no, but I, uh, uh, we were in Detroit, actually, I was going to go, we played Harpo's in Detroit, and of course I grew up in Windsor, Ontario, which is on the, across the river from Detroit, uh, but some friends of mine, they did give me some, uh, um, they did give me some items from, from the temple and stuff, and there was a, a lot of stuff about the temple, um, and a friend of mine who was very um, involved in it, you know, so in the news and articles and all this about the temple, but uh, you know, I think, Again, for me, it's, it's, it's symbolic, you know. The point of it is that um, if people choose a faith, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm not religious, but, if, uh, you know, I was raised as a Roman Catholic, mm -hmm. but I think if people choose a faith, um, then they need that faith, you know. I choose to just believe in humanity, mm -hmm. um, but if someone needs to believe in God because they don't have faith in humanity, well, okay, that's fair enough, but, you know, I don't need that, but they need that. You know, um, so I think some people need more things. I think there's an indoctrination which blends people into, you know, terrorism, for example, like, you know, fundamentalism, where they, they believe everything they're being told. Uh, but that's the whole point of a government, isn't it? You know, it was the whole point of the church. You know, the Pope is the Emperor of Rome. You know, that's how it, it, it made itself. And, and by sending out you know, there was, you know, even the Bible, which was, which was put together in Constantinople as a conscript of scripts, you know, was constructed by Constantine. It wasn't like found and they went, oh my God, is it, read this, you yeah. see the light. It was put together on purpose. And Magdalene's, Magdalene's scriptures are not in there. You know, half the other apostles, they're not in there. Half the other writings are not in there. And you know, you have, you have scriptures from 100 years after Jesus was dead from people who didn't know him and just had stories. So it's like the whole thing was put together to control the people of Rome mm -hmm. who were revolting, you know, with a new religion. So they panicked and thought, well, we've got, we've got to do something to incorporate it. Mm -hmm. So they, they manifested this thing. So knowing that control is the ultimate thing, I think uh, uh, that's the danger with religion, that's a danger with politics, you know. Um, but if you want to have <coughs> freedom of belief, then why not a satanic temple? Yeah. If people want to go and believe in something else, then they should be. The idea again is like the Lucifer or Satanism, it, it, you know, um, Levia Satan could have been a bit hoaxy, could have been a bit trickster, but there's, there's items in there that, that do have true meaning, you know, so you have to see yourself, you have to find your own way, and if that means taking bits and pieces from here to build what you believe, then, then do that. Um, I think to think the whole thing is like a satanic temple means that they're, you know, burning people and, and eating people and, and, you know, doing these terrible things is not necessarily true these days. I think people are a little bit more aligned and try and grab more out of it what they want. You know, that, it, it, it would prop the next question, which is like, what do you think of the church brainers from all those black metal people up in Scandinavia? It's like, well, you know, they didn't occur because they were Satanists particularly. They occurred because the, the, Christian, the, the Christian body ran into that country got rid of all their paganism and built fucking churches. Same here. Exactly, and it's like, hang on, and now the generation that came after Bathory uh, were listening to all of that Nordic, prophetic, you know, Thor's hammer, state, all, you know, all of that history. And they thought, why are we being dictated to by Christianity? We didn't fucking ask for it in the first place. And why can we not be proud of our Viking heritage or Norse heritage? So it ends up with them burning churches again, fuck off, get out, you know? Um, then you have that conflict, you know. So it, it's very easy to go, oh, if you go in and you spit on the church, then you're evil, you're the devil, you're mm -hmm. Satan. It's like, well, maybe you're not. Maybe you're just anti-church as a, an establishment mm -hmm. and you're proud of your own country's heritage and what, you know, your beliefs are. Um, you know, every culture in the world had a god, every culture, you know. Um, does that make Buddha bad because he's not God? What about Muhammad? The conflict is Muhammad, you know? Muhammad was a prophet, so was Jesus Christ, right? So he was and he wasn't, but he wasn't and he was. It's like, oh my God, yeah. Maybe they were both the Son of God. Maybe neither of them were the Son of God. I don't know, but you know, 
let them believe what they want to believe and you believe what you want to believe you know have that freedom you know to to castigate somebody because they believe something different to you mm -hmm. that's insane it is insane you know mm -hmm. um, and so you know all of we get tied into all of that kind of oh satanic church bad well okay well who says a Christian church is good you know, what cathedrals fine. We can have a cathedral this big to a god we don't know, based on a book that was written a hundred years after someone died that we guess might be was totally controlled. But we can't have a satanic temple because that's bad. Nuts, nuts. Good point. Yeah. Uh, we had a pagan riot here in. Yeah. We had multiple pagan riots in Hungary. I think the first one was in the 11th century. Yeah. And there is a hill not so far from here called Gellert Hill. Ah, uh, well, yes, yes. It was yes. named after a priest. He was put in a barrel and they just pushed him down the hill. <sighs> there you go. You were know. not happy. Yeah. And it's because of that. I mean, you look at South America and you look at how the, uh, 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 the culture was decimated, mm -hmm. you know, by the conquistadors, you know, un under the sign of a, a golden cross. You know, even if you go to you go up the uh, west coast, uh, even through Texas, the, the, there's a mission district, still a mission district in San Francisco. You know, still a mission district. So they went straight through Mexico Street, and you know, wherever there was anybody who had any other belief than than uh, uh, Christianity, they just changed it completely and, and got all these people to believe in this thing from Europe. That like, what's it got to do with them? You know, the word of God. But again. If you if you can, can convince everybody to, then you can control them, and it's always all about control. You know, yep. anybody who believed in anything different, you couldn't control them, which is quite funny. Isn't it? But it's like exactly the analogy that I was talking about about our music. That's bad. We played a club in New Zealand, and on one side there was the club, which was a dirty, sticky club, you know, full of metalheads, and if you went up the back to have a cigarette, on the other side was a beautiful garden playground of disco with a guy you know and all the women were beautiful in these fantastic dresses they look so hot the guys all smell of kuros with their shirts open and they all look fantastic and now if you had a, a your mom or you somebody coming your grandmother came there they'd go well that place is don't go in there there'd be drugs and fights and, and uh, but this one's okay however it was completely the reverse mm -hmm. everybody left our club with smiles sweaty had a great time and there was a bit of tidying up to do mm -hmm. in that club by four o'clock in the morning they were all pissed and police were called there was blood everywhere you know the girls were shitting and pissing in the street it was like look it's mayhem and this we're the ones who are yeah, supposed yeah. to be bad it's it's nuts you know mm -hmm. it's nuts uh, talking about how the Bible was constructed, as you said, uh, have you heard about that uh, writer called Lynn Picknett? Yeah. Uh, Cleve Prince, they also wrote a book, book together called uh, The Secret Tale of Lucifer or something like uh, that? Something like that, yeah. Have you yeah. read that one? I haven't read that, no, no, no. Um, no, it's, it's on my reading list. I've read paragraphs from it, but I haven't mm -hmm. read the whole thing yet. But uh, it's one of trying to catch up on the, on the reading thing, you know, but, um, you know, uh, this... I think you know, you know, the literature needs to be taken into account. You know, the writers are not always. You know, I used to because I majored in uh, American history, independence, me, uh, prehistory of America. Um, you know, I used to just read books blindly and think, oh my God, I read that in that book. But it's like reading a newspaper. You know, when someone says, oh, did you see what's happening today? And they they, they take a story to you and say it's in the newspaper. I go, but who wrote it? what's their bias you know and sometimes I think you have to be careful with readings you know I think you should read as much as you can particularly like this book which I think is very good you know and, and I have read extras and I do enjoy it uh, uh, but um, I've read so much literature which is from a person's perspective uh, which is fine but are they trying to convince you of their perspective that's the danger mm -hmm. you know if you write something and I write something about the same subject we'll have different viewpoints on it, possibly, you know, so we may cross at certain points, but we'll have our own take on what we get out. Again, like, if you go into any church that's teaching um, a scripture from the Bible, you know, the priest will have a different take on it, mm -hmm. you know, because what he thinks is the way, you know, you don't go into the church, it's not like McDonald's, you don't go and get the same burger everywhere, yeah. you know, and so... Except in India. Yeah, it is exactly, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So, you know, what well, I tell you what was it really interesting talk, talking about, you know, 
and it's slightly off the subject, but we, we just played in Singapore and Bangkok. And when we were leaving Bangkok, I thought something interesting on the way to the airport was a huge billboard sign which just had a picture of a, a buddy in the middle mm -hmm. and it said, uh, respect is easy. And that was as we were leaving. And I thought, yeah, every, there was so much traffic, there was so much going on, and yet everybody was so, seemed quite peaceful. Mm -hmm. And you think, wow, that's it, that's mm -hmm. the, the sign. Well, well, if that's, that, that's as religious as everybody should get, mm -hmm. that's all you need to say. You don't need to be going, you'll be condemned to hell if you do this or that. You're know, going to confession every five minutes and absolving yourself of something bad. You just take it on the chin, you know. Um, like Lemmy always said, you know, um, I'm responsible for me. If whatever I did that's good, I did it. Whatever I did that's bad, I did it. Uh, and, and that's taken responsibility. Back to music. Uh, you have influenced many bands worldwide. If you could pick the bands and the artists for a Venom tribute album, who would you like to hear to cover your songs? Oh, that would be very, very difficult. I think, I think, I think, what would be cool from me. I mean, you can assist the Mantis next if you want. Um, I think what would be cool for me. I'd like to see um, Metallica mm -hmm. doing some. Um, I guess all those bands. Uh, the Slayer, of course, the Witching Hour with uh, Rob from Machine Head once. Uh, I'd say it was a war war field video, um, which was okay, um, but I don't know, I'd, uh, maybe Pantera, you know, the original Pantera. Yeah. Um, I think those kind of bands, even Nirvana, you know, um, it would be cool to hear Nirvana do <laughs> ones. It would be nice to see different bands, you know, a lot of black metal bands and many bands have done them, you know, Cradle of Phil Bathory and all of that uh, as well, you know, black metal, of course, everybody knows. Uh, but but. Um, and I know I think it'd be nice to hear more contemporary bands that became contemporary. You know, one of the interesting things I, I thought was when when Jeff did the guest spot with Scooter. That was what I was going to. Yeah. Guess, yeah. And he did the guest spot with, spot with Scooter, and people were like, oh, are we? Um, but even he was surprised. Mm -hmm. But what he said was like, after talking to the guys in the band, they were all metalheads. That's why they were. That's why they wanted him. They were all metalheads. And they'd been doing their band and doing their music, and a couple of them happened to write a track that hit, and they became Scooter, mm. you know? But it's like, you know, just because your know, music's not one dimensional, you know, just because the guy's up there playing one thing doesn't mean that's his thing. It could be, it could have came from somewhere completely different. Um, so, yeah, it would be quite nice to see. Just find those people that aren't obvious. You know, you can go, well, this band obviously had were influenced in this band obviously but it'd be nice to find those bands that you didn't realize were influenced and see what they do with a venom song or something you know that would be interesting you know so yeah um but yeah metallica would be cool to hear yeah. metallica i don't know what they do with countless past me or something i suppose that would be yeah. awesome yeah probably fun. Uh, some of the older bands like black sabbath have retired some of the bands died out like motorhead and Slayer just announced the affair uh, to not so long time ago. Yeah. What do you think? How would this affect the whole metal scene? Well, we've talked about this before, myself and, and, and Jeff, and, and, uh, in depth, some depth in, in, uh, in interviews. And I think, you know, the way the genres have been put into, you know, they, they, they kind of were controlled into these areas. You know, once Venom said they were black metal and the album went out, you know, then. Chuck was death metal and, and blah 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 and we started fighting for oh we've got to have a title to be as cool mm -hmm. and, and that was okay but then but then the industry started pushing them into genres again you know you win uh, control if you don't if not everybody's together if you can keep them disempowered so whereas in the old days I'd go to a concert and everybody next to me would have different bands on them and I didn't care these days you go to a black metal show and most of them won't have death metal stuff on, they'll have black metal stuff on. And if you go to a death metal show, most of them won't have black, you know. It's, it becomes specific. And it's like, you know, they, 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 sometimes they don't think they can, that it's all one thing. That if you're grindcore, you're definitely not black metal. You know, if you're black metal, you don't like grindcore, you know. But there may be a grindcore band you think is brilliant if you listen to it. Well, you don't, because I don't listen to grindcore. So we become generic. And when I was 16, I was the same. If it wasn't punk, it was shit. But I think that um, 
you know, bands like Judas Priest, Mohead, you know, Black Sabbath and all those, uh, you can't listen to those bands and think they're in a genre. They're just them. And that's what we're waiting for. Where's the, the, if we keep going in these genres with this particular thing, where's the next, you know, priest or Sabbath coming from? Where are they coming from? You know, so that's the thing I think. The task now is for, um, to, to blend it all together again. So, you know, when, when young bands send stuff to me, I get, you know, CDs, 20, 30 CDs a month, you know, from young bands and music sent to me all the time. What do you think of this? What do you think of that? And, and it's fantastic. The playability, the technicality, I'm just like, wow, I'm always impressed. Anybody who creates music, I'm blown away by. Because, you know, you're exposing your talent, you're exposing yourself. And I think that's amazing. But what I try and go to them is like, look, I know you want to be this, like black metal or death metal or whatever, but why don't you take that and be something different with it? Mm -hmm. You know, don't just be like them uh, because there is an Amol, there is a Golgoth, there is a, you know, Golgia, there is a Bria, you know, they're already them. You don't have to be them, you have to be you. So, you know, take their style that you love and do something else with it. Because if you look at those bands, the Mayhems and stuff, that's what they did with the Venom thing. Mm -hmm. They took that, the, the, and Bathory, they took that darkness and that, you know, uh, um, uh, that sound and then they did something different with it. Mm -hmm. You know, and it's like, that's what we need. We need more of that, you know. So, um, I think the next generation hopefully will take pieces of everything. Right now there's a, a kind of revolution where, you know, you still had those bands going out. So you could see the new stuff, you could hear new metal, and you could see these classical bands as well. Mm -hmm. And so hopefully the, that's the new generation blending it all together and something incredible will come out of that. You'll have a, another explosive Venom or a Pantera or a Metallica or something will come out of it. That's the hope that that's going to happen, you know, we'll see. Yeah. Uh, what are your plans for the rest of the year? Well, we, we finished this tour in another, I think we got another seven shows. Uh, we finished in Poland and then we fly to Turkey. Mm -hmm. For the first time we play Izmir in Turkey, um, which is amazing because we managed to play places never went before like Tasmania yeah. and places like that. So we go to Turkey for the first time. Then we have a break of about a week to two weeks. Then the plan is to go to South America. We have North America again. Um, and. Uh, we want to try and find a gap in the summer. We've got festivals, Bloodstock, Metal Frenzy, some of that's coming in Psycho Fest in Las, in Las Vegas. Um, we'll do those. Uh, we'd like to try and get to Portugal and finish off the Empire album, just for ourselves. And then towards the end of the year, have that break to, to do the new uh, Venom Inc. album. And, and then we'll be, we're moving towards that anyway, but uh, complete it then so it's ready for the new year. And, then begin touring again in February, you know. We have a few more questions left. What are your five favourite albums of all time? Five favourite albums of all time. Motorhead, by Motorhead. Mm. Uh, the Incredible Shrinking Dickies, by the Dickies. Um, oh, uh, you see, it's all going to be kind of Motorhead, isn't it, really? So, mm. I would probably say it's uh, Sabbath, really Sabbath, by Black Sabbath. Um, I gotta see Wango Tango by Ted Nugent, which is one of my favourites, because um, that that was a, a period of time, and Highway to Hell by ACDC. Mm. Um, again, kind of very different for different reasons, you know. And if you ask me tomorrow, I mean, I'd probably, but Rain and Blood, of course, you know, is one my ultimate thrash album. You know, that's mm. there's everything's perfect about that album. You know, although I like Kill 'Em All, you know, all of that is brilliant, but Rain and Blood was like the most perfect anything you could get to f if you like that kind of music. So for me, that's, that was a standout. But you know, you Overkill made a massive impact on me, you know, yeah. so once you start digging in, you know. But uh, you know, even um, um, Into the Crypts of Rays, and, and you know, when, when I think of uh, Celtic Forest or Hellhammer, you know, uh, mm -hmm. for me, early destruction, you know. There's just so much music once I start to think about it, you know. But it, I, I always wonder if I was on a desert island, I'd never be able to take uh, just one or two albums with me. I'd have to take a collection with me because yeah. there's just so much good stuff out there. Yeah. What's the meaning of life? 
The meaning of life is life. That's the meaning of life. Don't get caught up with what's gone because you can't change that. And don't get caught up with what's coming because you don't know what that is. So we only have the moment. So the meaning of life is the moment you're in because uh, I could walk out of here and be killed or I could drop down as soon as you stop that camera something could happen to you or, or may not. We may live to wear 105, both of us. So, but you only ever have the moment and so use the moment wisely. When it's gone, if you made a mistake, the next moment you can change it. You've learned something, so keep learning. Keep your eyes open. Let the light shine in you. Be aware of the light. You know, Don't be sidetracked by people who just want to drain you of who you are and what you are, because they will suck it all away from you. They'll fill themselves up with what you've got to give them. So just, you just make sure you come first. You know, that doesn't mean to say you don't have to be kind or considerate or respectful. Please be that. But, but make sure you put yourself first, because at the end of the day, you're born alone. You may have a mother who's there with you and a father, but you're, you're born alone. You will die alone. So, you know, your influence will be whatever it is. But, you know, make sure you enjoy the most out of your life while you can. Eat what you want, do what you want, be who you are. Um, but just be respectful with it. You know? mm -hmm. but, but do enjoy life. That's the meaning. You're just here, so just get the best out of it. Do you have a message to your fans? Yes, thank you very much for for supporting the music that we've done for such a long time. You know, we're, we're coming towards 40 years now. And in any configuration for Venom, you know, which is part of my history as well now, but for everything that I've ever done uh, for myself, I want to thank you very much. But on behalf of the guys, you know, the, the amount of respect and the amount of uh, support has been incredible. We're all very humbled by it. And we'd like to thank you very much. I hope we see you out on the road very soon. Thank you so much for the interview. Awesome. Thank you so much.